Okay, hello Year 11, this is Dr. Beck. Uh, welcome to another short video looking at physics for GCSE. The second video in a series of two is about free body diagrams, but this time we're going to look at how we can incorporate the idea of resultant forces into a free body diagram. So the last time, the last video, we saw that instead of making, um, taking lots of time to draw somebody doing something, a baby in some kind of harness, being kept from falling, bouncing somewhere, this will take too long. Instead, for any object experiencing these forces, this will suffice. This is a free body diagram, either a circle or a large dot. So today we're going to look at drawing some of these again, and this time looking at the resultant forces. So if we look at um, this diagram, halfway down this page, we're asked to draw the free body diagram for the weight, but we're also asked to calculate the resultant force on the object or system named. So what do we mean by system? The system is the whole thing, but we're looking for an object within that system. So here we're looking at the weight, or technically we could call it the mass. So we're going to attempt to draw a free body diagram for that and look at the resultant force. So here is our diagram of the mass. That's it. And hmm, two newtons up and two newtons down. Interesting. The resultant force acts as a vector, so in, in a particular direction. So it's two newtons in one direction and two newtons in the opposite direction. So the resultant force here will actually be two take away two. The resultant force equals zero newtons. So, for this one, there's no point in drawing any arrows. That would suggest a resultant force. There is no resultant force for 2 part A. Let's have a look at the others. Part B, the resultant force for the free body diagram for the lawnmower. So, this time, we can draw our lawnmower, free body diagram. 16 newtons to the left and 12 newtons to the right. Ah, this time we will, we will have a resultant force. One of those forces is larger than the other. So I'm going to choose as a positive direction the direction of the larger force. So we do a little bit of maths. We have 16 newtons in this positive direction, right to left. And we have 12 newtons acting in the other direction, which we've um, said is now negative. We take that away. The resultant force is 4 newtons in this positive direction. So here, then, is our resultant force. And we label it like this. Okay, so we've got a few more. We've got C, D, and over the page E and F. I'm going to give you a few minutes, not too difficult, five minutes to draw accurate resultant forces on free body diagrams for this object, these objects. Okay, welcome back. Hope you haven't found those too difficult. Free body diagram for the acrobat. Well, again, for any free body diagram, it's a circle or a large dot. Here we have an upwards force of 400 newtons and a downwards force of 400 newtons. These two are acting in opposite directions, not just different directions, opposite directions. Therefore, we can take one from the other. Here, there is zero newtons resultant force. So we don't need to draw the arrow. Part D, we have our sledge as a free body, 60 newtons 
to the left, 40 newtons to the right. We don't need to draw this, but it helps me to think. So if you wish to draw that, make sure it's obvious what your free body diagram is, though. Perhaps sketch this in pencil and you can rub it out. So I'm going to choose that this left, uh, right to left is a positive direction. So I've got a positive direction acting 60 newtons and a 40 newton force in the other direction. We do our maths. 20 newtons in this positive direction. So our free body diagram looks like this. In our exam, we can therefore rub out our working at the top. And that's all we need. Again, let's go through these last two fairly quickly. Let's just check we've got the right thing and the right idea. So part E, we have our smaller mass, our weight, free body diagram. We have 23 newtons down and 15 newtons up. Again, I always look at the larger number and I usually say that that's my positive direction. So 23 newtons down, and down is positive, 15 newtons up. 23 take away 15 gives us a total size, magnitude, of 8 newtons in this downwards direction. So this is our positive direction. F, we have our baby. Here it is. 80 newtons up, 60 newtons down. Again, the positive direction I'm going to choose for this one as being up. 80 take away 60 is 20. So 20 newtons in that positive upwards direction. So there's my vector, 20 newtons upwards. Okay, hope you haven't found those too difficult. Well done. We'll move on in another video.